Hi, this is John Hoban for the Society of Participatory Medicine, back with Vanessa Carter with a uh, fascinating story of how she used the Internet and technology several years ago. Uh, she was in a near-fatal car accident, and her face was, uh, uh, was badly damaged. And uh, Vanessa, tell us a little bit more. You were just mentioning offline uh, about uh, some of the providers that you ended up linking with uh, through, uh, through the communications technology. Tell us a little bit about that. Um, yeah, it, after eight years of about searching, um, I, uh, I ended up getting uh, MRSA uh, from one of the, the prosthetics that they put in. And, uh, you know, it was a very bad infection. I didn't understand much about it. So I ended up, I've got a medical report that's about 600 pages. It's 43 doctors um, from all the injuries. And, wow. you know, so every time I went to a doctor, I'd have to give this over. And um, so when I, when this eventually happened to me, I thought, well, you know, let me put everything into a two-page as, as best as I can, and I started emailing it e everywhere, you know, the best hospitals in the world. And uh, eventually I got a, a reply from the uh, face transplant uh, division in Brigham and Women's, and uh, one of the doctors there offered me a Skype consultation at no charge, and just to give me direction of what I needed to do. And, you know, it was step by step. Uh, and with that information, I could find doctors, I mean, you know, if, if I went to a doctor in Johannesburg and it didn't sound right, I would go to the next one until I got the right answer. Um, the professor that I ended up going with was the third best in the world. For three years, eight years I've been searching for him, and he didn't have a website. He was 30 kilometers away. Uh, wow. Yeah, you know, so it was a waste of eight years. A you know, simple thing just to, you know, if we had just found it on the Internet. And you got that, uh, that connection was through your connection in Boston? Um, yeah, you know, it was just the advice that he gave me because you get different types of disciplines. Uh, you know, you get plastic surgeons, microsurgery, you get craniofacial, get, and I was seeing all of them and getting different, uh, you know, versions of what I needed to do. But but the bone was collapsing, and that's what had to be done. Um, you know, so I had to look for a maxillofacial uh, a surgeon, and um, you know, I only understood that after he explained it to me. So, you know, within eight months, it, it solved the problem, and, uh, you know, I, was accept I looked acceptable to go out, um, you know, again. Wow, so. wow. That's, that's amazing, Vanessa, to have waited uh, eight years for that process to occur, but, uh, but, you know, lo and behold, an excellent outcome, eh? Yeah, it definitely was. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. <laughs> So the um, I seem to remember there was a uh, there's a foundation or some other uh, some organization that you're leading uh, in South Africa. Can you tell me a little bit about more about that? Uh, well, you know, there's there's two initiatives really that I'm working on. Um, one is a face to save project, which was uh, an awareness campaign that I started on Facebook initially, and that led to Twitter, and that led me to Healthcare Leader, and I would get up every week at two o'clock in the morning to, to attend that because I was just so fascinated about, you know, how far the rest of the world was, um, you know, in terms of connecting and medicine. And, yeah. uh, you know, from there, then I, I got mentored by a couple of people. Um, one was Tom from Simpler. And uh, I started the HCSMSA uh, uh, community on Twitter. Um, you know, we're a little bit behind. We, we're starting to catch up now with the whole uh you know, being on 24 medicine and, um, you know, but I think where I am now in, in terms of where we should be is it shouldn't be dispersed all over the internet. We should all come together. You know, it, it, it is so difficult to put the pieces together for a patient, especially, you know, it, for me, it's these massive words I've never heard of, zygomatic osteotomy, and, you know, um, I, I just had to learn. Um, so, uh, you know, we, we couldn't, do the internet a lot better if we could bring the resources to the patients in one community, um, you know, one geographic community. Yeah. So, yeah. Geographic and uh, virtual, eh? Definitely. You know, we've got the the resources, um, you know, and I think with from what I've been reading, I mean, P4 Medicine is all about genomics. We, You know, we could be collecting that data in one central, uh, you know, database, um, you know, I often find that I, I get different contacts on LinkedIn and different contacts on Twitter and different contacts on Facebook, and it doesn't solve the actual issue of 
you know, how do we cure cancer? How do we, um, you know, uh, so, you know, that's my, that's my uh, view of everything. Um, yeah. Like a uh, whole series of archipelagos. Say again? Said like a whole series of archipelagos. Everyone's an island and being able to connect the, all the islands of all the knowledge and information so that you have one holistic uh, brain, so to speak. Yes, exactly. And yeah, take the technology and turn it into knowledge and power. Exactly. I, I, you know, I think that at least by 2020, we should be searching by networking. It, sh it shouldn't be Google. It should be networking. Um, you know, we should have uh, – I, I should be able to get onto my computer like Microsoft Outlook and manage my health with a dashboard and, and build a profile and, you know, say, well, have apps recommended to me? Um, I mean, we've got that, we've got that technology. Um, yeah. yeah. What are some of the things that you could uh, uh, take to the, the society leadership, the Society for Participatory Medicine, uh, along those lines? What would, uh, what would have benefited and shortened your eight-year journey and cycle? Um, you mean my experience? What would, I, what would I? Yeah. What could the society do? Do if, uh, if they had the tools and resources in place, how could um, they have impacted a, a shorter, uh, shorter outcome cycle for you? Um. Well, well gosh. I mean, searching is, is is something that takes up a lot of time. Uh, you know, and researching. And I, I think that the problem with Google, for instance, uh, you know, is. You're not dealing with registered users. You're getting. Um, I mean, I, I did a proposal the other day for HCSMSA, and I, I did a search on find a doctor for diabetes, and I think it returned like 86 million results. And out of that first page came more directories to search for doctors. You know, and so but by the time you actually get to the answers, you've gone through five websites, and you, you actually don't even know if it's here because it might have been, you know, sent out by somebody. Pretending they were a physician. Um, right. So there's just so much to it. Uh, and, you know, I'm, I'm enabled. I, I, I'm actually pretty good with understanding um, human anatomy and, and that sort of thing. And I'm obviously creative, so I can connect the dots. People that are not, and especially in my country, um, they might not be uh, literate, that sort of tool would really benefit global health because now you're dealing with the challenge of AIDS and you're dealing with the challenge of TB and, and you know, so um, how, how, how can we expect them to search on 10 different complicated platforms and use hashtags? Yeah. yeah. Forget yeah. it. Yeah. You know, when you're, you're dealing with the life situation right there at hand, uh, it's complex enough if you've got a clear, you know, a clear agenda, uh, let alone then you're dealing with complex health and life issues, you know, it's, uh, it's just not feasible. Yeah, exactly. So, so tell me about in uh, in South Africa, the uh, what is the the total uh, population would you estimate that is online and using uh, healthcare and the internet such as yourself? Oh yeah, that's a difficult one. Um, I'm actually not sure. We've got you know we've got a lot of Facebook groups. Uh, you know, it's very dispersed again. Twitter, Twitter is only now starting to, uh, you know, I'm seeing the health tweets coming up because three years ago, uh, we didn't have IBM SA, we didn't have Philips SA. I was on, I seemed like I was the only one and I was, I was waiting for the health associations to come and arrest me. I thought, well, let me just do this because everybody overseas is, <laughs> you know, it must be right. This is, this is what patients need. They, they need to speak up and we need to have somewhere we, you know, we can share our problems because it is, it's very isolating, and you know, uh, yeah. So it, it changed my life. I mean, I've joined communities where there's 400 other patients with facial differences, and you know, you just suddenly realise you're not alone. Yeah. And that in itself is a uh, certainly a, a psychoneuroimmunological benefit, where the uh, psychological state where you're connected with other folks that are understanding what you're going through has a direct bearing on your immune system and your neurological system to, to give you that peace when you uh, have birds of a feather. Yeah, and I mean, if you want to take it even further, you know, maybe people don't want to work because they're so depressed. I think it affects the whole, We, you know, we, we just, 
are not utilizing what we have um, in a humanitarian way to benefit everybody, uh, you know. So, you know, I think even with the HCS MSA thing, um, it, you know, if I had to present it, it would be to a university. It wouldn't be to a corporate. It would be in, in, in some way that it, it could benefit um, everybody. Yeah, well, I'd, I'd certainly like to continue this dialogue as to how the Society for Participatory Medicine can be part of that, because uh, as you uh, you and Dr. Mayank Ardawal, who's our head of our operations for the newsletter, is in New Delhi, India, uh, a few thousand miles east of you, and uh, you're in South Africa, and you're several thousand miles east of me in New York, and, uh, and you know, we're uh, as we continue on with the technology, we realize that uh, the 7.2 billion human imagers are all uh, all connected. Yeah, exactly. We are. I mean, the, you know what? Health is a global thing. Um, you know, it is a global thing. Uh, if if um, you know, if you start reading about all these predictions of mutating genes and um, you know how it. it I mean, airborne Ebola will affect everybody, um, yeah. you know, so, yeah, it's really important. And there's, there would be knowledge that we could share with each other. Um, I mean, we, we're sitting here with a lot of uh, what they call the human origin, you know, in Africa. We're sitting with a lot of genetic diversity, um, mm -hmm. you know, and, and we're not sitting with the technology that's in the northern parts of it. So, yeah, we've got to work together. Yeah. Have you followed the uh, work of uh, Dr. Francis Collins at the National Institutes of uh, Health in the U.S.? I have, and I've also been uh, reading a lot about Dr. Leroy Hood, um, you know, and what they're doing uh, there, um, you know. So, yeah, I think I'm sort of at that stage where um, I, I think that's really what this is all about, is, is the genomic side of things, you know. Um, working together to make the system work better to resolve issues. Um, yeah. Yep. Quality and quantity of life, right? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, well, Vanessa Carter, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, again, uh, I know you gave the email address uh, in the shorter version, but uh, how can people reach you directly? Okay. Um, it is Vanessa Carter, V A N E S A. C A R T E R at H C S M S A, so Healthcare Social Media South Africa, it's acronym, dot co dot za, or the uh, short is uh, Twitter um, on at underscore face S A, F A C E S A. Excellent, thank you. I'll uh, make sure that we put the links into the newsletter as well so that people can just click on it. But uh, for those that don't have the newsletter in Australia, I'll be able to reach out to you as well because uh, we're looking forward to, uh, to partnering and your participation in the society. I'm looking forward to it too. Thank you very much. Excellent, thanks, Vanessa. This is John Hoban <laughs> signing off for the Society for Participatory Medicine. <laughs>